The U.S. Army Air Forces participated in numerous night operations during World War II. The P-61 was specifically designed to fly nighttime missions. Air crews needed to maintain their night vision during these missions. The intent of this video is to review methods, tactics, and lessons learned to optimize a crew member's night vision and access countermeasures adopted to ruin their night vision. 80% of a person's sensory inputs are from the eyes, as discussed in this 1995 U.S. Army Research Institute document. Military forces require good vision acuity and depth perception for enemy detection. Your eye possesses two light receptors, cones and rods, as shown on this page from a 1944 naval operations document titled Night Vision for Airmen. You use your cones to see in the daylight and rods at night. In daylight, cones provide the majority of your vision. In dim light, both cones and rods share in your vision. In starlight darkness conditions, rods alone account for all of your vision. Because cones cannot pick up dim light, there exists a blind spot in your vision. Air crews need to be aware of it and account for it. The blind spot extends 5 to 10 degrees from your eye. Night vision extends around 40 degrees from your eye. By looking directly at an object, it will be masked by your eye's blind spot. Best to look at an object from the side. This image shows the incorrect method to view a target at night and the correct method. The object needs to be picked up by the eye's night vision rods, not cones. This is an example poster reminding pilots to look slightly away from the target given their night blind spot zone. Cones are used to see in daylight with fine detail and color. Rods are used to see at night, no fine detail, shades of gray, and can see movement. Rods are a thousand times more sensitive to dim light than cones. If bright light adapted eyes are exposed to a dark environment, it will take some time for your eyes to adjust. The eye pupil will dilate to allow more light exposure. The eye's daylight cones will adjust to the darkness in around 7 minutes and will become 100 times more light sensitive. The eye's night vision rods are 100,000 times more light sensitive, but this adaptation takes around 30 minutes. However, a dim light adapted eye will transition to a bright light adapted eye in only a couple of minutes. Just 10 seconds of bright light saturation will negate the dark adaptation, and the 30 minute re night vision adaptation process will need to start all over again. Because of the long night vision regaining duration, the first rule of night vision is adapt your eyes and keep them adapted. So, what tactics can flyers take when operating at night besides looking at an object from an offset and once night vision adapted, stay adapted? Your night vision rods do not react to red light as they do to white light. Any light exposure should be a red light. If white light illumination is required, then the crew member should view the light through red goggles like these shown. The crew member can also shut one eye. This will preserve night vision in the closed eye. Red goggles should be worn if the plane is illuminated by a searchlight. If in a searchlight area, best to fly by instruments and maintain your head down. A B-25 pilot looked down at a searchlight beam and lost control of his aircraft. Modern day commercial airline flight deck crews take a different approach in dealing with the effect of bright lights. The concern is a cabin crew's eye exposure to lightning and the oversaturation temporary blindness it may cause. They turn on all cabin lights by the storm switch located here on the Boeing 777. That way if lightning strikes the nose of the aircraft their vision will recover faster. This graph shows a recovery to dark adaptation after light exposure. The x-axis is the time from 0 to 160 minutes and the type of light exposure. The y-axis is the degree of dark adaptation from 0 to 100%. When exposed to darkness after full bright light saturation, the eye's dark adaptation will follow this path. The cones will become dark adapted after around 10 minutes, and the rods will become full dark adapted after around another 30 minutes. Eye cone dark adaptation is destroyed when exposed to dim red light, but eye rod adaptation is retained. Overall degree of dark sight adaptation is reduced by around 20%, but full dark sight adaptation is restored to 100% after around 10 minutes. Dark adaptation is reduced by 75% if exposed to a dim white light where both rod and cone adaptation is partially destroyed. Full dark adaptation can be fully restored after 25 minutes or so after dark exposure. Humans show variation in their night vision ability. The differences can vary by a factor of 10. This chart shows the results of a study comparing the night vision differences of soldiers from a 1945 Joint Army-Navy Committee document. The upper 10% of soldiers can identify a tank at a distance of 94 yards, whereas soldiers at the lower 10% of night vision acuity can identify the tank at a distance of 10 yards. 
Always account for night vision blind spots by viewing objects by off glances. Eat well, especially vitamin A. These World War II posters tout the benefits of vitamin A and carrots in enhancing night vision. The U.S. Army now recommends just maintaining a healthy diet and do not consume vitamin A supplements as too much will cause bleeding in the back of the eye. Keep the plane's transparencies clean. This diagram shows proper night scanning technique. Scan by viewing a small area, then jump your eyes to the next area following a methodical path. Air crews should start using oxygen when at altitudes above 10,000 feet or at night. As defined in this 1943 Use of Oxygen and Oxygen Equipment document, the rationale for oxygen usage at night is described on this page. Vision is strongly dependent on oxygen intake levels. Night vision is reduced by 25% at altitudes of 8,000 feet and 50% at 12,000 feet. There is no degradation to night vision if on oxygen. A stationary object may appear to be moving at night. This is called stair vision. This may be dangerous. Another rule of thumb is don't stare at night. Other nighttime tactics are described on this page. Use the moon to aid in nighttime visibility. Keeping the moon at your back, a submarine's weight can be spotted up to two miles away. When looking towards the moon, a surfaced U-boat can be seen four miles away. During the Battle of Midway, PBY Catalinas torpedoed a Japanese ship spotted seven miles away by moonlight illumination. Estimating distances is difficult at night. A plane will be difficult to spot over 600 feet or 200 yards by starlight. If tracking a plane, fly above or below them at varying angles greater than 45 degrees to maximize their exposed area. Rule of thumb is fly below the enemy aircraft if flying over dark ground and above them if flying over clouds. This will aid in background silhouetting the plane. In late 1943, a couple squadrons converted their B-17s for nighttime bombing, as discussed on this page from a 1953 Development of Night Air Operations document. The details are discussed in this channel's video. The bomber modifications related to crew night vision include add blackout curtains, replace the instruments with illuminated instruments, replacement of the ball turret's computing gun sight, which was too bright, blackout the ball turret's viewing ports except for the front sighting window, the window shaded would need to be blacked out. Flash hinders to be added to all machine guns. This is an example of a flash hinder. All crew members need training on night flying. Gunners need special training on preserving their night vision. Axis powers use searchlights to blind bomber air crews. As discussed in this 1945 Japanese electronics document, searchlights have brought down aircraft as discussed in this 1942 War Department Tactical and Technical Trends document. Searchlights blind pilots, impair bombing accuracy, impair crew night vision, and affect crew morale. German bombers also drop time delay flash bombs to impair the night vision of tracking fighters, as discussed in this October 1943 Air Force Service Journal. Fighter pilots were trained to place their heads down and close their eyes to preserve their night vision. This page lists nighttime strafing tactics for light and medium bombers from a February 1945 Tactical Air Force document. Effective strafing occurs only if the target is sufficiently moon illuminated. The bomber will fire along the target's length and up moon if possible. The bomber will disengage in a climbing turn too. Avoid being silhouetted by the background moon, allow the turret gunner to continue strafing the targets, and make ground AA targeting fire difficult. If you've enjoyed this World War II aircrew night vision tactics, lessons learned, and Axis countermeasures deep dive review, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.